If you play Minecraft for a while now, you will know by now that there are two versions of Minecraft. Java Edition and Bedrock Edition. But did you know there's actually a third version of Minecraft? Is it Dungeons? No. Is it Earth? No. Legends? No. Story mode? Shut up. So back in 2016, Mojang decided to release Minecraft Education Edition, a version of Minecraft designed to teach children cool science stuff. There's even like a feature on Bedrock where you can just like straight up play Education Edition, but on a phone. Now, as a science student, I thought the whole thing was pretty cool, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the only problem I have with it is that it's not very realistic. Okay, so you see this, right? We have iron, and then we also have iron, and then we have copper, and then we also have copper. Okay, so to be fair, um, this thing came after um, this thing. And then you see these three elements, right? We got hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. These three things are supposed to be air, so like, they're not even supposed to be blocks. And then you see this thing, this thing right here is supposed to be killing me right now, but it isn't. And in case if that isn't enough for you guys, what on earth is this thing? And as you can guess, I'm not having any of that. Now you might be thinking, oh Matthew, wanna just go onto MCPDR and just find a random chemistry mod? Well you see, the thing is that with the existence of Education Edition and the fact that it's, well, science, there's really no reason for anyone to make a chemistry add-on. Oh then Matthew, wanna just make the chemistry add-on yourself? I mean, you did spend like 5 months making a bunch of YouTubers into Minecraft, uh, twice, wanna just go through the effort of making the mod yourself? Okay, now listen, I know what you're all thinking, well, like a quarter way through the year right now, I'm not gonna spend the next six months making a mod to teach chemistry in my own. Okay, so since it's gonna be a huge project, we're gonna start off with something simple salt. Now in real life, there's two major ways you can get salt, either from rocks or the ocean. And because we're not going to be messing with ore generation just yet, we'll be taking the ocean approach. But Matthew, I hear you ask, why the ocean? You see, in real life, water in the ocean has a lot more salt concentration than other water sources, which is why water from the ocean is way more salty compared to your normal drinking water. But the thing about Minecraft water is that it's pretty much the same no matter where you get it from. So by using this logic, we can make it so that every water block is pretty much salt water. Now you might be asking, how do we get salt from ocean water? Water. See, in real life, so it's extracted through the evaporation of seawater. Now, because evaporation in the overworld just doesn't exist, the next best thing we could do is to extract the salt by boiling water, which means all we have to do is melt a bucket of water, and that will give us a bucket of salt. Now, that's pretty cool and all, we got a bucket of salt, but then that begs the question how exactly do we get the salt from the bucket? I mean, we can't just uncraft an item unless you want to make an uncrafting table. Well, yes, we can't do that, but there is still a way to get the salt. See, whenever you want to create a custom item, there is a special code function called the onUseAction function, which basically executes a function command when the item is used. So the idea is that when you hold click on the salt bucket, the salt bucket item will disappear and give us the salt and of course, an empty bucket. Now that's the first problem, time for the second. You see, in real life, there's a lot of salt that exists in the ocean, the problem is that most of them are just hard to get either because there's not much of that kind of salt in the ocean or they're just generally difficult to get. So you can't just get every single salt in existence purely from seawater. So the idea now is that whenever you use the salt bucket, you'll get 3 sodium chloride salt. You know, that one salt from that Jimmy Neutron episode. Croissant! And a chance to get 1 of 5 different salt. So all we gotta do now is code a randomized code line, create 5 different function commands, and... And boom, it works and the bucket is still there, okay. Oh cool, we got an infinite bucket glitch. So as you can see here that we're getting a lot of different salts right now. We got um, sodium chloride, this is also sodium chloride, we're getting a lot of those. Uh, we got calcium carbonide, we got magnesium sulfide, magnesium bromide, um, chloride, and potassium chloride. Yeah. Okay, so I changed the code a bit so now, oh there's a sea turtle right there. So I changed the code a bit so now, when we use the salt bucket, and boom, the salt bucket is gone. So now when you use the salt bucket, the salt bucket item will disappear. Now you might be thinking, Matthew, why do these salts look the same? Why did you just make separate textures for them? Are you lazy? Okay, first of all, yes. And second, well, that's the fun about chemistry. In real life, pretty much every salt looks the same, and you never know what kind of salt you're gonna get. Unless you bought it from like Target or something. And you get to use different chemical reactions just to see what kind of salt it is. Speaking of which, time to code the next feature of the mod. Flame test. The idea of a flame test is to determine the type of salt based on the color of the flame when you burn them. And the color of the flame is corresponding to the cation of the salt. Or in simple baby terms, the first word of the name of the salt. So if you were to burn a salt of sodium chloride, 
you can see that the flame color will be yellow. Here's a better example. So you can see that we have magnesium chloride, magnesium bromide, and magnesium sulfate. And if we were to burn them all together, you can see that the flame color will all be the same. This is because the salts all contain magnesium. So as long as the salt contains a cation like potassium, the flame color will always be purple or pale violet for all the artists out there. And no, that doesn't mean a banana will burn purple just because there's potassium in it. Aww. This works the same way for the other salts, I just only use magnesium salt as an example because we don't have the other different salts of the same cation. Which is why we need blaze rods. But wait a minute, I thought this was a chemistry video. Why do we need blaze rods? Well you see, it's not the blaze rods that we want. Well I mean yeah, we still need a brewing stand. But what we also need is an element known as sulfur. But Matthew, how is sulfur connected to blazes? Well, let's take a closer look. What are three noticeable things about sulfur? If you look up sulfur on the internet, the first thing you'll probably see are the images of sulfur. And what color are they? That's right, yellow. And where can elemental sulfur be found? That's right, near volcanic areas or hot springs. And third, you'll eventually find out that sulfur is also flammable. And with all these three aspects, they all seem to fit with one thing, the Minecraft blazes. They can be set on fire, found in hot places, and most notable of all, yellow. Okay, that's cool and all, but then, why do we need sulfur? Well, you see, if we have sulfur, we can convert it to a thing known as sulfuric acid. Although highly dangerous with the power to melt your flesh and bones, sulfuric acid is one of the most useful chemicals in chemistry, and with it, we can make a whole bunch of chemicals. So that means I'm gonna have to go to the nether, find a fortress, and get some blaze rocks. And that's gonna take a while. I kinda wanna get this sand and wait what the hell? So it just occurred to me that I can create a furry. <sighs> that was crazy. Now where the heck am I? Guess I'm in a different world now. Huh, saw my sand turn into blaze rods and the oh I I lost the bucket. But at least I got a redstone block from that. Well now that I got some blaze rods, let's continue with the mod. Once you got some blaze rods, you can craft them into blaze powder, which you then can craft them into sulfur. Now that we got sulfur, it's time to make sulfuric acid. The first step is to burn sulfur into a gas known as sulfur dioxide. Now, since sulfur dioxide is colorless in real life, I mean it so that it looks like a normal glass bottle. You can then mix sulfur dioxide with water to make sulfuric acid. Now, this step isn't exactly accurate to real life, but it's the best I can do without using the catalyst method. Now that we have sulfuric acid, we can now make hydrochloric acid. To make hydrochloric acid, you need to make sulfuric acid with either sodium chloride or potassium chloride. Or you can also make the salt solutions by crafting salt with a water bottle and get the salt bottle from smelting them and you can still get the salt from the bottle. Now, in real life, this method of making hydrochloric acid will only create it in a gas state, but for the sake of simplicity, I made it easier to obtain it. You can also use sulfuric acid to dehydrate sugar which in turn turns into carbon. You can also get carbon by crafting it from coal or charcoal. And with carbon, you can also use it to make a graphite rod. And with the graphite rod, you can use it to make a special item I like to call an electrolysis apparatus. Now, this part might be a bit confusing, so let me explain it for a bit. See, electrolysis is basically when you use electricity to break down a liquid. So when electricity is passed through a liquid like let's say water, eventually the water will break down and produce whatever molecules that spawn in water. I mean breakdown. Which is why the electrolysis apparatus is also crafted with redstone components. Oh yeah, you can also make copper sheets from copper ingots. With the electrolysis apparatus, you can use it to convert sodium chloride into sodium hydroxide. This works the same way for potassium chloride. You can also use it to convert water into hydrogen gas. Now for all you science nerds out there thinking, wow that's pretty cool, but um, where's the oxygen gas? Don't worry, I got that covered. See now if you were to craft the same thing again with an empty glass bottle, you can get both hydrogen and oxygen gas. Then wait a minute, what happens if we were to do the same thing but with sodium chloride? Well, if you were to do the same thing, you can get both sodium hydroxide and chlorine gas. And if you were to use sodium bromide, you can still get the sodium hydroxide, but instead of chlorine gas, you get bromine gas. But Matthew, I hear you ask, where did you get the sodium bromide? Well, remember the magnesium bromide that we got earlier? See, if you were to mix magnesium bromide with sodium hydroxide, you would get sodium bromide and magnesium hydroxide, which is insoluble, meaning that magnesium hydroxide can't mix easily with water or dissolve if you want to be scientifically accurate. And with that, we can also separate them and get the solution in the precipitate. Now, there is one more thing I haven't introduced yet, and that is nitrates. Now, nitrates are one of the hardest compounds to get in nature, and it was kind of difficult to find a logical way to get them in game. But then one day when I was researching how to get nitrates, I found that it's possible to get nitric acid from dirt. So, I made it so that you can get nitric acid by using a water bottle and dirt with a brewing stand. Now, getting nitrogen compounds from dirt is typically more complicated in real life, but then again, remember, this is Minecraft. This is as accurate as it 
can get. You can also get ammonia by using the same method, but instead of using water, we're using potassium chloride. And uh, again, as accurate as it can get. With nitric acid, you can mix it with sulfur dioxide to get either sulfuric acid or nitrogen dioxide. This entirely depends on which way you put the two items. So if you were to put sulfur dioxide on top and nitric acid on the bottom, you get nitrogen dioxide. If you were to do it the other way, so nitric acid on top and sulfur dioxide on the bottom, you get sulfuric acid. Okay, so since we just went through a lot of things and I'm pretty sure that some people are already bored by now, so I'm just gonna slow things down and teach something more familiar with kids. Actually, while I'm here in a tiger biome, I kinda wanna find some sweet berries so that I can make some wine. Wait, how do you make wine from sweet berries? I hear you ask. Well, we're not exactly making wine from berries directly. See, the first step is to get sweet berries to make sweet berry juice. It's like, uh, imagine grape juice, okay? Imagine the sweet berries are like grapes. Oh yeah, by the way, if any kids watching this wanna try making wine from grapes or something, just, just please don't, just, just don't do that. So, to make sweet berry juice, you need to craft it with sweet berry and of course a water bottle. Now that we got sweet berry juice, we can now make it into wine. Now, I'm no professional, but a little fun fact about making wine is that you basically just need to wait around for the juice to undergo a process called fermentation. It's basically when the sugar just starts turning into alcohol thanks to yeast. Now, just like evaporation, fermentation doesn't exactly exist. However, there is one exception. So you know how you can make fermented spider ice by using a mushroom and sugar? Yeah, it's basically that. Now, you might be thinking, uh, where's the yeast and why do we use mushrooms? Well, you see, both yeast and mushrooms are a type of fungi and that's what turns the sugar into alcohol. We can also turn wine into alcohol. Now your game might be thinking, wait, isn't wine already alcohol? Well, not exactly. See, wine does contain alcohol, but it's only like a small amount. So it's not exactly 100% pure alcohol. Wait, then how do we turn it into pure alcohol? Okay, so in real life, they undergo a process called distillation, which is basically just boiling and then cooling the steam. This basically just increases the alcohol concentration in wine. Uh, kinda, I don't know. Again, I'm not a professional in winemaking. And drinking the wine will give you nausea. Uh, I, I think that's how being drunk works. I don't exactly know how drinking alcoholic drink feels like. Like I'm 18 right now, but I haven't exactly drink an alcoholic drink yet. Uh, never will, but you know, since this is Minecraft... Um... <laughs> oh, this is so... Oh, this is trippy. Okay, I think the effects is about to wear. to make uh, a bunch of people they um they make art and they have amnesia what could go wrong uh, uh, okay uh, i i guess i'm in the maze of biome now and for some reason i got a bunch of iron ingots and some bones i'll i'll probably use them for something later um is that tree supposed to be there okay so I think some parts of the previous will teleport it with me. I mean, it's kind of a good thing because I got these blocks right here. And that tree is just floating. Okay, continuing on with the mod, we can also turn the alcohol to something called acetic acid. It's basically just stuff in vinegar. To make acetic acid, you just need to add oxygen to alcohol. Now, in real life, you need something called an oxidizing agent. It basically allows whatever substance reacting to it to undergo oxidation. And in real life, when adding oxygen to alcohol, it will convert it to something called Acetyl the acetyl uh, uh, the what the what 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 as a acetyl the or converted to something called an aldehyde. Now I know having it isn't exactly relevant, but you know gotta make it as realistic as possible. And then all you have to do now is to add oxygen to the aldehyde, and that will create acetic acid. You can also use acetic acid to make acetate salt. So all you have to do is to craft acetic acid with any hydroxide salt. So let's say we're using. Um, sodium hydroxide and the thing is not working okay okay so there is a small issue in the code but uh, you kind of get the idea so when you mix acetic acid with sodium hydroxide you'll get sodium acetate and yes you can also smell the thing to get the salt you can even get the salt from the bottle oh yeah I also forgot to mention that you can also um, craft the two items to get the salt bottle yeah so yeah, that's a neat little neat feature. And yes, you can also do flame tests with these things. Actually, while I'm here in a mesa biome, or a badlands, I have no idea why this biome has like two names. You can get iron-free oxide. But Matthew, I hear you ask, where do you get this iron-free oxide and why are you breaking red sand? Well, you see, we're getting red sand to get the iron-free oxide. Ever wonder what makes red sand, well, red sand? Well, it's because red sand is rich in iron, and that's what, well, makes red sand, um, well, red. Uh, kinda. I mean, it's more of an orange hue. Now, my idea to get the iron-free oxide is to do the same thing with the sea salt. So, all I have to do is to craft these two items to get a bucket of red sand. And when you hold click it, and boom, we got one silica, we got um, two iron-free oxide, 
and one calcium oxide, yeah. So similar to the salt bucket, what I did is I made five different function commands, I wrote a randomized code line, and uh, this is what I got. So if we were to do it again, we got um, three silica and one iron free oxide. Okay, so what I also did is that um, just like a small chance that um, you can get a thing called aluminum oxide. Now, it's a very small chance, it's basically a one out of five, and for some reason I got um, two calcium oxide already. So we're just gonna continue um, doing this entire thing until we get the aluminum oxide. Okay, so like after 21 tries, um, it's like a one in five chance that we'll get aluminum oxide, and yeah, uh, we got it like after 21 tries. So yeah, aluminum oxide is like pretty rare to get. It's like rarer than calcium oxide. Like if you were to do a statistic out of this, like whatever, like a data table or graph, you can see that it's like very rare. It's like basically a Beyblade random booster or whatever. With the iron-free oxide, you can use sulfuric acid to make iron-free sulfate solution. This works the same way for the other acids. So nitric acid, we got iron-free nitrate. Um, hydrochloric acid, we get iron-free chloride. Yeah, you can also smelt the solution to get the salt. So just for a showcase, we got um, iron-free chloride, and we got iron-free nitrate, and we got iron-free sulfate. Speaking of iron, we can actually use iron nuggets to craft iron 2 compounds. Now you might be asking, Matthew, what's this iron 2 and iron 3 compounds you're talking about? And what makes them different? See, iron is a transition metal in the periodic table, and because of that, it means it has different oxidation states. Uh, Matthew, I, I still don't understand. Okay, so remember the cation that we talked about earlier with the flame test? See, iron atoms can also be cations, but sometimes that iron atom has different number of electrons around the atomic nucleus, thus explains the different oxidation states. It's like, uh, like, the, like imagine the solar system, okay? Imagine the solar system where the planets are electrons and the sun is the atomic nucleus. Okay, so imagine the solar system is like an iron 2 ion, but then if we were to remove a planet, like let's say Pluto, the solar system will now represent an iron 3 ion because it now has one less electron compared to the solar system representing an iron 2 ion. But Matthew, Pluto isn't a planet, it's a dog. <laughs> So in a nutshell, basically transition metals can sometimes have different numbers of electrons within the atom, which what gives them the different oxidation states. And because of that, iron 2 and iron 3 compounds can have different properties, like different colors. Anyways, going back to the iron 2 compounds, so as you can see here, that we got iron 2 chloride, it's green, and we got iron 3 chloride, which is yellow. Now you might be wondering why some salts have slightly different colors to their solution counterparts. And I'll be honest, I don't know why, I just looked up Google making these things, and this is what I got. Man, I should have made this back when I was in high school, like, I could have gotten A for chemistry from this. Well, I mean, at least I did get a passing grade for it. We can also make copper compounds using copper sheets. A little cool thing about certain copper salts is that they can exist in two different states. One where there's water within the salt, and the other where there's no water within the salt. So like, one wet and one dry. And the cool thing about it is that they have different colors in both states. So, uh, as you can see here, that this is copper sulfate, this is blue, and then when we go for anhydrous copper sulfate, you can see that it's white. This works the same for copper nitrate and uh, copper chloride. So like, as you can see here, this and hydrous copper nitrate, and this is anhydrous copper chloride. We can also make copper hydroxide using either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that you can also make sodium carbonide using sodium hydroxide. See, in real life, sodium hydroxide has a unique property of absorbing moisture from air, which also means that it inadvertently uh, absorbs carbon dioxide from air, meaning the sodium hydroxide will react with the carbon dioxide that it absorbs and produce sodium carbonate. So meaning that we can also make copper carbonate using either potassium or sodium carbonate. Now, similar to magnesium hydroxide, copper hydroxide and copper carbonate are insoluble in water, so we can easily extract them from the solution. Actually, while I'm in creative mode, I want to see if I can. Okay, so you guys know how this block has like the longest name for like a block or an item in Minecraft? Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you. I think I broke the world record. Okay, can we guys just like take a moment to acknowledge how shiny copper hydroxide looks like? I mean like this is copper sulfate and then like look at how shiny copper hydroxide is. Like look at it. And it definitely does not look like something else. We can also smelt the copper hydroxide to make copper oxide. Speaking of oxide, we can actually <sighs> finally. A whole goddamn year. I finally did it. Well, time to put the put the put the put Anyway, speaking of oxides, we can actually make oxide salts from heating other salts. Just uh, just remember to put them in a bottle first. Now, let's do something with bones. Okay, a little fun fact about bones is that it's basically just calcium and phosphate, meaning there's phosphorus in them. And another fun fact is that there's a way to get the phosphorus from bones. Okay, the first step is to smelt the bones to the point until it turns to ash, aka bone ash. 
Once we get bone ash, we need to mix it with sulfuric acid to make phosphoric acid. After we get phosphoric acid, we need to craft it with carbon to get white phosphorus. Now you might be thinking, Matthew, why did you just say phosphorus? What's with the emphasis on the white? See, elemental phosphorus can exist in different forms, where the structures are different from the other forms, or allotropes to be more specific. By the way, if I sound tired doing this, um, this part of the recording session, uh, it's because I am. I just woke up like one hour ago and it's like, 7 a.m. and I'm just so goddamn tired right now. Okay, so let's take carbon allotropes for example. Ever wonder why they say you can make a diamond from a piece of coal if you press it hard enough? See, both diamond and coal are made of pure elemental carbon, but what sets them apart is their different structures. And because of that different structure, it also gives different properties to the allotrope, which explains why carbon allotropes like coal and graphite are black, weak, and flammable, while diamonds are more transparent, harder, and heat resistant. Okay then, but explain how is it possible to turn coal to diamond. See, when coal is exposed to enough heat and pressure, the bonds between the carbon atoms begin to break, thus allowing the atoms to be able to be rearranged to form a different structure, thus forms the diamond. And so similar to that, we can actually heat the white phosphorus to red phosphorus. Oh yeah, you can also convert red phosphorus back to white phosphorus for some reason. Okay, now for the last feature I've decided to add into the mod, and that's litmus paper. The main idea of a litmus paper is to determine the pH value of a solution, basically how acidic the solution is. If the paper turns red, the substance is acidic. If the paper turns blue, the substance is basic. And if the paper turns purple, it means that the substance is neutral, meaning it's neither acidic nor basic. It's like a, it's like water basically. To craft a litmus paper, you need a paper, the, and a very specific flower. Once you craft a litmus paper, just craft it with any solution and you can find out its pH value. But Matthew, doesn't crafting items have like this little thing where you can see the item right before you actually craft the item? Well, what if like, I don't know, um, someone decides to exploit the system so that they don't actually have to use a litmus paper? Don't worry, I got that covered. See, if we just make two versions of the item, one where it's tested and the other hasn't, we can make it so that when crafting one, it gives the untested one, and when you whole click it, it gives the tested one. But Matthew, doesn't that mean that you have to make a whole nother set of litmus test solution items? Yes. Welcome to my channel. And after all that, the salts, the solutions, the acids, the elements, the electrolysis apparatus, the litmus paper, and everything else that we've already been through, the mod is finally complete. Now all we gotta do is just find some sort of way to just advertise this like some sort of a commercial or something. Hi, I'm Matthew. Are you sick and tired of Minecraft Education Edition being too boring and unrealistic and not having constant updates for the past year? Do you wish to not fail chemistry while singing Apple Bottom Jeans? Well, thanks to our newest product, you will, um, y y you still probably gonna fail chemistry anyway. Introducing the Better Chemistry Mod. Better chemistry. With the help of the same person we contacted years ago to help with our previous product, he helped us make the entire thing all by himself using only his phone. This isn't a joke, he actually made this all by himself, so... We kidnapped him. With better chemistry, you can learn basic chemistry with salts, solution, and acids. And best of all, fire. With only just two simple installments, your children can now learn about elements, chemical reactions, electrolysis, and production of certain chemicals. You might be wondering, is this Mojang approved? So, with only just 50,000 likes, you can buy your very own Better Chemistry mod today. Warning, SkyUp Industry is not responsible for the misuse of Better Chemistry mods such as production of illegal substances, endangerment to the environment, electrocution, alcohol intoxication, manufacture of explosives, and death of customers. Better Chemistry, to give our future generation a better destiny. Ah, <sighs> what a day. I can't wait to get back to my home world. Okay, if I got this right, using that one aluminum oxide I got under the right condition, that could take me somewhere near home at least. Just need to get to the world height limit. Okay, got this bolt. All my stuff is in that chest, so when I glitch, I'll still have all my stuff without any of them changing to something else. Man, I can't believe it's been over two months since the Tommy in it video. It just baffles me. Well, can't wait to go back home and finish up this video, then work on another Samayan video, then that video flops, then work on another video, then that one flops then work on another video, and then that one will also flop, and then the next video, and then, and. What's the point? What's the point in doing all of this? Every time I do things, it's, it's just gonna be the same thing all over again. No matter what I do, I'm just gonna get the same thing all over again. Whatever I do, it's... 
it's all futile, it's all pointless. Everything I've done, it's, it's all gone now. They're all gone now. What's the point in even doing all of this if I'm just gonna continue ending up alone? Hey, what's going on guys? Matthew here. Today we're going to be doing a redstone tutorial. Hey guys, it's Matthew here. Today we're going to be doing a challenge which is basically kind of a trend back in the day. So about several days ago, we just hit 10 subscribers which is lit. But I've been constantly asking me, Oh Matthew, where have you been? Where, where are you going to release your new YouTube video? Did you quit you? This. This is what I've been doing for the past 4 weeks. Hi, welcome to my channel. It just occurred to me that I can create a furry. But thanks to our newest product, you will um, you still have no friends. I decided to make up a bunch of people. They, um, they make art and they have amnesia. I just want them to talk to me. What could go wrong? So a lot of people ask me, who's your favorite Marvel superhero? But they never ask who's your favorite Marvel supervillain. And my favorite Marvel Super Villain is Mysterio. And I want to become him. Like, I kind of planned this out on back in like March of 2021. Shout out to Procrastination. Shout out to uh, school for like helping me delay this whole thing. Whatever happened to me for the past few months. But the fact that the idea of the video was to make so much, it wasn't really that satisfying. Without any game audience, I just can't begin this tournament the way I wanted to. What the hell am I gonna do? Wait, what?
please. I just want to go ho ho. What? A shulker box? What the? Hey Matthew, if you're reading this, we are now even. Also, happy belated. What the? Your friend Olivia Lavon. P.S. I think you might need this. The hell is this? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Matthew Skaya. If anyone is watching this, if anyone is even seeing this at all, actually, you know what? Screw this and my full manly, I'm gonna just get straight to the point. I have a long history of losing friends. Some went bad, some just lost contact with, some lied to me, backstabbed me, others just decided to leave me on their own terms. Hell, there's even some that I don't even think they consider me as a friend half the time. God, I still remember how I got kicked out of my friend group just because I wasn't playing Clash of Clans seriously enough. I don't miss them though. Just missed the thought of what we were. Now I've been gone for over two months, maybe three months, I don't know, I kinda lost count a while ago. Anyways, during these three months or so, I've been alone in this void-like world and you know what? It taught me a little something. Is that not every friend that you have or make is gonna be your friend. And not every one of those people will be by your side for so long. And not every one of those people will ever come back the second they leave. But if there's one, just that one friend who decides to stick by your side, who will always come back for you, who will wait for you, then they're the ones who matter. Because they're your real friends. And if they don't, and if you're still alone, and you do something, just anything to make you feel less numb, then I'm here to tell you that it's okay. You don't have to keep fighting like this. Everything will be okay. And that's the end of the video. Sorry about the little lore segment back there. Uh, I was kind of feeling a bit goofy lately, you know, having the kiss of the sillies. If you're wondering why this video took so long to make, uh, don't worry. I've already graduated high school. Um, I'm in college now. It's gonna be so awkward if that one guy I met in university just found this video and watched it and then be like, why is this guy wearing a mask right now? Oh, and if you guys are wondering, This is my new gamer chair. It's honestly crazy how long it's been. Like, my first ever video is already like 3 years old now. Like, we're in 2020 season 4 right now. And the government just announced that aliens are real. I wonder if people will notice that this video is also in 4K. You guys remember that time that I made like 75 YouTubers into Minecraft for a video? Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you. I think I broke another record. Like, no joke, this one is like so big that I'm pretty sure it's the biggest I've ever made. Like, this video is already longer than the Tommy in it video, so you know it's a huge project. Like, it's not just the items, there's also the recipes, um, the function commands for certain items. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's big. If you guys want like a part 2 of the mod, uh, I think you guys are gonna have to wait for a while for that one to come out, cause like, I'll probably work on other stuff, cause uh, making this mod is like, so exhausting because I'm like doing 100% of the work. Anyways, if you like the video, like it. If you don't like it, like it anyways. I mean, it's not like we can see this much anymore, right? And if you want to support the channel, you can always subscribe to that smash button. And I know this is gonna sound cliche, but like, please do check if you are subscribed because like, honestly, I thought this whole unsubscribe bug thing is like some sort of a propaganda until um, someone told me that YouTube did actually accidentally um, unsubscribe me from their account. So. Uh, yeah, um, so yeah, do check if that's the case then. Maybe that's why I'm constantly losing subscribers. And as usual, you can go follow me on Instagram, uh, Tumblr if you want to. Uh, I don't really use Twitch anymore. Um, Twitter, I mean X. Oh yeah, you can also go join my Discord server. If any of my old viewers are wondering if I'm gonna restart this server in like a week later, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Like I just didn't like to constantly go through the whole process of making a new server every time, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. But yeah, you can go talk to the community there, and hang out with people and stuff. Uh, you can also get like sneak peeks of future videos, and like exclusive content on the server. So if you want to, all the links are down in the description. Actually, I pretty look damn good in this in this angle. Actually, hold on. Do I look like Game 3 right now? Do I look like MadPat now? 
so yeah, that's uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching the video, everyone. Uh, I know it's pretty much a goddamn movie at this point, but uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!